Hi everyone, welcome back. Believe it or not, I actually got around to making two videos in one week. Um, today we will be repotting one of the monkey thorns, originally uh, known as the Acacia galpini. It is now changed to the Senegalia galpini um, due to some discrepancy from our friends in Australia saying that Acacia belonged to them and not to South Africa. Um, main challenge with this tree at the moment is with it being in this tray where I've left it for the last two or three years is the amount of growth as you can see and in the intro section Gizmo. and uh, also not trying to have your hands torn apart by the thorns they've got nasty thorns um, I won't be removing those in any way you will have seen some of the bark um, that comes off which is also one of the characteristics as the tree grows and the trunk expands the older bark breaks off and makes way for the new bark a lot of new growth so a good time to repot and get things going there's a lot of extensive root growth on this tree um, the main thing I have now, or one of the other problems, is this meat tray that I used as a growth pot has become very brittle in the sun, which is something I didn't realize when I started and then I planted this. So getting this one out might not be the biggest problem, but I need to keep the other three trees inside because I'm not ready to repot those yet. Um, also known as not having enough pots. So let's see how things go. might be a little bit easier than what I thought. It's loosening up well. And just a note of interest, the monkey thorns and your thorn trees do not like having their tap roots cut off um, very drastically. So what I did when I got these is I made the first cut and we'll probably see how things progress um, and, and the root formation that we've got as they were allowed to grow freely in this pot and in the soil which did allow for them to grow quite a lot and the trunk, trunks to expand and thicken which is always the desired effect weeds in this pot at the moment but not the end of the world oh, now we get to a mess of roots at the bottom here got these branches that are getting tangled. Ouch!
what I am happy to see is the amount of root growth and root development there is, which will allow me when I repot it to choose which roots I want to keep and which I want to get rid of. My goal was to do this last year, but time didn't allow for that. So we're getting to it this year. We have been way better doing it last year. Looking at what I have to work with here. I've also got I've also got two pine trees that have just come up here. Three. By themselves, I don't know where or how the seed ended up in this tray and in the soil. But they've come up, I've left them to grow. We'll see if I can do anything with them later. I don't know. Um, I'm not too worried about them. I'm not a great fan of pine bonsai. That is Jasmine and Gizmo, the neighbor, the neighbor's dog, getting so close to the boundary wall. We've got this annoying shrill little bark. I don't know who he thinks he's going to scare with it. What I want to be careful of doing is actually pulling the trunk away from the root ball, which will leave me pretty devastated as these are my definite favorites when it comes to bonsai trees. I love the way they grow and how the canopies form. They're fairly fast growing. And uh, pretty easy to handle. If you don't have four of them in the same pot. We've just about got it out now. I'm pulling some of the bigger roots out with it. Smaller ones are obviously breaking off. There we go. And we've actually got the others staying in the tray which is what I wanted. Hello. Now you see me. We're going to move this over for now. And make some space, clean it up a bit quickly, make some space for the pot, and uh, then we can get to repotting. Okay, um, clean the table a bit. I'm going to be repotting into this uh, pot that I got from my friend Vicky at Umschlaba Pottery. Um, they based here in Mossel Bay. It is a pot that was actually not uh, destined for selling. And um, it's big enough for this tree. I'll just be using it to to get things going again. Um, later on, when I've got the canopy styled um, and the tree growing as I want it, then I'll be looking at a dedicated pot um, on which I'll spend some money. But for now, it's basically just to get
get it into another pot, get it out of that growth tray and uh, getting it to look like a bonsai tree in a pot. All right, we are back with the roots. You'll see a lot of the root growth has come to the right hand side, um, which we'll be rectifying a bit. Um, just getting it cleaned. Basically, the taproot on this one was removed earlier on when I got the trees. And uh, the one thing with the monkey thorn trees is once you start cutting on the roots, they do tend to throw off a lot of leaves. Um, that's normal. So if you do are new to the, the bonsai with the monkey thorn trees, or the Arpis Doering as it's known in Afrikaans, you don't have to get a fright. If you do see a lot of yellowing in the leaves, um, just make a point to remove excess leaves to allow the tree to recover. Um, if you are not going to remove enough leaves, then you run the risk of losing the tree. That being said, you've obviously got to make sure that you don't remove so much root ball that you've got to remove a lot of canopy, which leaves you with nothing to work with. And you've got to start the whole process over again. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, be gentle with the roots on the monkey thorn trees. Give them, give them room to grow. Um, and don't cut back too much. Rather take your time. Um, we all know that bonsai trees do not take shape and grow overnight. It's something that takes time and you have to wait for it and let the tree do its thing. Um, okay, let's uh, start having a look at these roots. We've got a, a pretty big strong root growing out this way which I'm definitely going to keep um, but we'll be cutting back some of the other roots this is a long one we don't need them to be that long so um, we'll cut that one back there Jasmine's trying to make a statement fine roots on this side with most of the bigger roots growing out on this side which I actually find quite interesting because as it was in the pot I would have thought that most of the roots would have come out and grown to the other side be that as it may I'm not gonna complain Is a stubborn root. Just cut it off like that. It's always important to get as much of the soil out of the root system as you can so that you can see what's going on. The last thing you want to do is accidentally cut off a main root. Um, this one, as you can see, is growing out from underneath and growing back to the other side. I think for now I'll keep it. I'm not going to bother anybody. As for the root pruning, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I've got enough space in the pot. I might trim these long ones back a little bit more just to allow for some space. I've basically got my base layer of uh, Leica and 
peat moss in the pot. Um, this is a growing medium I get from bonsai tree. It's easiest for me to use. I don't have to worry about mixing my own and trying to get things balanced properly. And I've found that the root growth on many of the other trees when using this growing medium has been very, very good. So I'm hoping it will do the same for this tree. Now the main thing is to find a spot in the pot where this tree will look its best. I do believe that I am most likely going to have to wire this tree in place um, in the pot. It is a little heavy. I'm not sure if the soil alone will be enough to, to keep it in place. As I've said before in some of my videos, um, this is also still a learning process for me. Now when you are required to wire a tree into the pot, make sure that you do the wiring and your sheet that covers your holes first before you put in any of your base layer. Because if you don't, you're going to poke it through and you have a problem because now this is lifted and some of my lica has gone and my medium has gone underneath this so i'm gonna to have to throw all of this out and uh, get the wiring in place and then add the base layer again so yeah if you haven't done this before learn from my mistake <laughs> Okay, basically you'll see I've got my wiring in place now and the base layer has been replaced. So let's have another go at this and see how we can... Here we go. Now the trick will be is to just... Uh, get these wires across the roots. You of course don't want to tighten it too much as that will damage the tree, the roots, which is the last thing you'll want to do of course. This is the time in bonsai when you wish you had four arms and four hands. As that would have made it a lot easier. Basically, we've got a tree placed. Um, I am actually going to remove this root that's growing out of the top of the other one. It's going to become a problem. So let's just take that off there. And the cutoff point will be below the growing medium, which will of course then give the create the opportunity to um, just create some more new growth in the root system. All right, let's get some. You'll see I just add a little bit at a time for the simple reason that I use my trusty chopstick to work it in between the roots 
work your growth medium in between so that you don't have any air pockets that form where your roots don't have any contact with the growth medium which of course leads to opportunities for all sorts of other funny things to happen with the roots, roots dying off, too much water collecting and this of course also helps to stabilize the tree when you add the rest. We've got another funky root growing up here but I'm just going to guide that in below there see if we can keep it down with some of the new next new medium that we'll add just now we'll get it down there I don't want to cut it off um, it's one of the stronger roots on the side of the tree so yeah quite stubborn I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a rock a smallish rock that I can use to just uh, pin it down <laughs> and keep it underneath this medium so that it can grow there I magically procure a rock out of thinny. It's actually my daughter that has helped me. My son is standing behind the camera. They find all the video making highly amusing. Trying to hold their laughter. while their father feels like a total idiot talking to a camera while there are people there. 